Greetings folks and welcome back to the Electro Mega Show. I'm a little bit under the weather this week so the show might be a little bit shorter and a little bit different to normal. However, I still have a whole load of great stuff to show you and of course the Mystery Box competition. So let's get started. First this week we're looking at Linux FX10, which is a Linux distribution made to look like Windows 10. It's not the first to do this, and in fact we talked about Twister OS just a couple of weeks ago, I think, but this one looks incredibly like Windows 10. So I saw it on the Nova Spirit Tech YouTube channel this week first. Um, he has a very fantastic deep dive of this operating system. He'll be covering it far deeper than I am today. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. But yeah, I wanted to get it up and running and have a quick look at it. And um, I have it here, um, albeit in a slightly wonky screen resolution because I want it to be quite large for the video recording. Uh, also, um, I can't get 1920 by 1080, uh, 16 by 9 in this version of it, although I believe that's just because I'm running the live ISO and I haven't installed it. But um, if, you, if you, like me, uh, tend to install Linux distributions that are already put together, I tend to use Ubuntu um, or sometimes Linux Mint, depending on what machine I'm using. Um, I don't really go for Arch or that terrifying at the cold face of computing, putting your own machine thing together. I don't, I don't have the time for that at the minute. Um, but this is, a, yeah, this is a very functional and well put together Windows 10 clone with everything you'd expect from a Linux distribution and a few more things. Um, as far as I remember, Steam doesn't come pre-installed on uh, quite a lot of different Linux distributions. Um, rather than go through everything here, there is something about this that I did discover uh, from reading another article that I find sort of interesting. And that article is the Fosbytes review of this uh, Windows-like Linux distribution. So as mentioned in the article here, the Linux FX founder has put together this distribution as a way of shipping their software. Um, they're working on computer vision software for multiple camera control, and they also have their own sort of uh, voice assistant Cortana-like uh, thing, which to me kind of explains why they're going so hard on trying to make this seem exactly like Windows 10. I think they're actually trying to not con people into thinking it is actually Windows, but to give people a one-to-one -one user experience. So um, that's kind of interesting, and I'm sure there are various other Linux distributions that have done this before, but uh, yeah, I just thought that was worth mentioning. If you want to get Linux FX, you can get it directly from the developers from their website, which is windowsfx.org. In fact, it appears that they call it Windows FX, whereas everyone else who's reporting on it seems to call it Linux FX. I don't know if there's a reason behind that or not, and I'm not going to look into it. But um, should you bother? Should you have a look at this? Yeah, you totally should. It's fun. It looks eerily like Windows 10 when you're using it. I don't necessarily have a need for a Linux distribution that looks like Windows 10, but I'm definitely going to install it on something just for fun, uh, just to mess around with it for a while. And the fact that it comes with things like Steam pre-installed and Kodi is a very nice touch. I guess the only other question is whether you actually want a Linux distribution which is being packaged specifically to ship surveillance software. That's a kind of moral question that's a little bit higher than my pay grade, but for just messing around with something that feels and looks a lot like Windows 10 but has all the benefits of Linux, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. I'd, I'd give this a look. Next up this week is a tutorial on the Raspberry Pi 4 by Les Pounder. Now this was passed on to me by someone else and I've had a quick look at it and it is fantastic. It's very well explained and that is no surprise because Les Pounder is a creative technologist, educator and writer based in the northwest of England. Um, he's written for various different publications including Electromaker which is how I actually came to come across this. However this is on his personal blog. So this is a fully fledged getting started tutorial for the Raspberry Pi 4. It takes you through the very basics, like flashing an SD card, in great detail. Um, step by step, it will tell you what you need to do, and if you've never done it before, I'd be absolutely confident that you could follow this. However, it isn't just for beginners, because it immediately moves on to booting from a USB drive. Now, there are multiple reasons why you might want to boot from a USB drive. Not least, it's a little bit faster, and SD cards can actually wear out, run out, and just break out of nowhere. Um, and this is just as easy to follow as the guide beforehand. It's a step-by-step -step guide which ends as a bonus with overclocking the Pi 4 to 2 gigahertz. So if you want to go from nothing to getting as much out of your Pi as possible in one short tutorial, I absolutely uh, suggest going to this uh, tutorial, which I will be linking in the description. And uh, Les has written some fantastic articles for Electromaker. His own site is absolutely chock full with fantastic articles of all different kinds. And if you're just generally a, a person who's interested in maker and coding and tinkering in general, it's a fantastic website and one I'm sure we'll be coming back to in future weeks. So this week, the PL1-0 Universal Sensor Interface went into its funding stage. 
Now, this is a little breakout board which will allow you to plug pretty much any sensor in the world into your Arduino or Pi. I understand that maybe at first glance that doesn't sound too interesting because surely you can already plug everything into an Arduino or Pi. But if you, like me, have tried to plug a 5 volt uh, thing into a 3 volt tolerant pin and have let out the magic smoke on one or several of your microcontrollers in the past, you'll realize how nice this is. The board has eight input channels that can be configured individually and work in different ways. And the switched voltage comparison circuit can take input voltages of up to 30 volts. Now that up to 30 volts input is kind of important because um, if you are someone who is starting to get maybe a little bit more interested in how the actual industrial applications of sensors and uh, microcontrollers work and uh, sort of like me, uh, one foot in the hobby world and one foot working out how the real people in the real world do things, um, this is a way to start testing it. Um, there's always different industrial uh, organizations and labs and different places that are going out of business and selling things off for a very small price. If you'll remember the Atomic Pie we covered just a, a little while ago, um, it was purely down to the fact that um, the Curie robot had gone bust and they were trying to sell off their boards very cheap. You can do the same thing here. You can buy industrial sensors, you can plug them into this board, plug them directly into your Arduino and it will work without blowing it up. So yeah, as it says here on the site, color comparators, fiber optic brake lines, contrast sensors, and many laser sensors are only sold, sold in 10 to 30 volt DC packages. Uh, so yeah, this is a way to plug those things into it. This is the kind of project that just appeals to me because it is matching one world to the other. Uh, needless to say, I have already backed it. And uh, if this thing gets funded and gets sent out to me, I'll be featuring it on the show. And of course, if it doesn't, I won't because that's how funding works. However, I just wanted to draw attention to this one. I know this one might be a little bit out of scope for some people, um, but if this is the kind of thing that you're into, uh, you're just as excited about it as I am. So yeah, the PL1-0, there'll be a link in the description. Moving over to Kickstarter, let's have a quick glance at CrowPi2 and see how their fundings go. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I, gu I guess they made it. I, gu I guess they did it. So this week I started seeing adverts on YouTube for the CrowPi2. It's almost as if there is an algorithm listening to and watching everything I do. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that this has got so uh, successfully funded. It means that it definitely will go into production and it means the chances of me getting my hands on one are much higher. Now, as I said several shows ago, I, uh, I reviewed the CrowPi1 for a different company and uh, I found it to be a fantastic little piece of kit. Um, I, I'm not someone who gives good reviews just for the sake of it, hence me being blacklisted by at least one mobile phone company and I will never be able to review phones for them again. Um, but the CrowPi is something that I think is uh, a very genuine product. There's no way of me knowing if that's true. I don't know the team behind them. I don't know anyone at Elecro. But uh, yeah, I'm very glad they've hit their goal. But moving on to another Kickstarter project. So PyTop4 was Kickstarted. It actually was Kickstarted some time ago and they almost doubled their goal, um, getting 190 six thousand dollars they asked for a hundred thousand so they did pretty well and i just find this to be quite an interesting little device because um what it is essentially is a raspberry pi case but a very fancy raspberry pi case that comes with a kit now it has an oled screen in the top um, you can put a battery in it you can attach to an external screen using a USB-C cord. They have their own proprietary port for that, although they do provide uh, connectors in, uh, to allow you to use normal HDMI as well. Um, and they have a, a load of sensors which are in what they call a bento box. Now, um, these are sensors that are, are placed on little proprietary boards that fit together in, uh, without the need of a breadboard, which is kind of cool, but in, also kind of weird, actually, to me at least, because I kind of feel like that's gonna really drive up the production cost of these things. And the whole idea of a breadboard is that you can slot things together and learn about circuitry while you do it. Um, as always, uh, ETA Prime has a video on this um, and I'm not going to go into much detail on it because he has always gone into more detail on things than I would ever have the time to do. Um, and I'd be more than happy to send this video your way. Again, there'll be a link in the description for a very thorough look at the pie top. Um, and the only reason that I really wanted to bring it up now is because this is another example of something which did very, very well on Kickstarter and is now in production. The only thing about it that I find a bit difficult is that it is $299. The $299 version doesn't come with a battery, it doesn't come with a screen, it doesn't come with a mouse or keyboard. It comes with essentially what you see here. And there is nothing inherently wrong with that. Um, but for that cost, you could also buy a Raspberry Pi for the eight gigabyte version. You could buy a Raspberry Pi touch screen. You could buy all the peripherals you would need to put it together and a breadboard and a whole host of sensors, a lot more than that they are selling. 
Now, I know that these are probably catering for slightly different markets, um, but I do find it sort of fascinating that this thing is out there. And I really would love to get my hands on one to see if there is a marked difference, because this is clearly a product that a lot of love and design has got into. And because of how well they did at Kickstarter, it's clearly something that people believe in. But these slightly higher end projects, especially which have proprietary connection systems, are something I find fascinating. I don't have a problem with them as such, I just don't see quite how they fit into the rest of the maker world. Uh, maybe one day I'll get my hands on one of these and uh, be able to be proved completely wrong and realize exactly what it is for. But until then, this goes definitely in the category of expensive, nice to have. Before moving on, I don't want you to think I have a problem with PyTop. They seem like great people who are really passionate about what they do. And in fact, uh, Further, which is their education platform that I haven't had a chance to have a look at yet, seems like a very, very good example of them making it easy, not only for people to learn, but for educators to learn what they need to learn to pass it on. And I have to concede that one of the things that it didn't even occur to me until I read a bit more about the new PyTop is that these sensor modules that they've created uh, are going to be fantastic in terms of accessibility. There are people who maybe are too young or are not able to use breadboards and this will allow them to work with sensors and that is overwhelmingly a good thing. I just wanted to make that clear before we moved on. <laughs> But wait, it's the middle of the show and I'm standing up again, which can only mean one thing. It's time for the mystery box competition. It's a cheap trick, but it brings me so much joy. So if you've watched this show before, you'll know the drill by now and you'll know what I am doing. Behind me is a mystery box. I'm reaching into it to pull something out. This is filled with some things that are fantastic and useful and some things which are potentially useless, maybe outdated, or maybe it's a part that fits onto a thing that you just don't own. But you enter this competition by saying, I would like to win what is in the mystery box, please, in the comments of this video. And last week, someone wrote, I would like to win what is in the mystery box in the comments of that video, and they have won a... What is this? Link it one from Seed. Well, Seed make nice things. This is uh, optimized for wearing devices, the ultimate development board for wearables and internet of things. So as is customary on the show, I looked this up very briefly. Uh, this Linkit board is fantastic. It's a MediaTek and Seed Studio board. That means it has GPIO pins, but it also works with the Grove connection kit. Um, and you can connect all kinds of stuff to this little arm based board. Now, um, I did have a quick look on Instructables and there are a bunch of people using projects, using it in their projects on there. But now that we have a prize, what we need is a winner. Since I've been a little under the weather this week, I didn't want to do anything too convoluted to choose a prize winner. So I put everyone into an Excel sheet, Excel. So I put everyone into an Excel spreadsheet as normal and gave everyone a number. And now I'm going to use a random number generator in order to choose a winner and stop. What number are we on there? And our winner this week is Natalie is Lovely, which is a fantastic YouTube name. We'll be in touch with you in order to how to send this board out to you. And if you'd like to take part in next week's competition, please write, I would like to take part in the mystery box competition underneath this video that you are watching. But for now, let's get on with the show. Great Scott is a maker and educator who makes fantastic YouTube videos uh, that explain in great detail things you can do with an Arduino and general electronics. And uh, he has a fantastic sky style, as you can see with his uh, uh, handwritten drawings, which are beautifully filmed and explains things in great detail. I have learned a lot from him over the years and I recommend everyone checks out his channel. Now this week he has automated an entire greenhouse using long range Wi-Fi and sensors and uh, this is the kind of video project that I really like. It is a full project from start to finish and um, explaining everything as it goes. And if you've ever been interested in making something like this, this so far to me appears to be the definitive easy to follow tutorial video. Um, I will be linking to it in the description and if by some chance you've not come across the Great Scott channel before and you are interested in not only the general maker and Arduino world from the perspective of um, electrical engineering and the boards themselves, it's also just a fantastic place to learn about uh, electronics in general. If by some chance you hadn't come across this channel already, um, I highly recommend it. He's one of my favourites and I will of course be linking it in the description. Which brings me on to... Stuff Made here had uh, an internet moment recently with the backboard that will not let you miss. Um, this was, uh, for me, actually the first time I'd come across the channel, which is surprising given that his channel is exactly the kind of thing that I love and I'm amazed the algorithm hadn't spat it up at me already. Um, he is back this week with a fantastic project, which is using the uh, LiDAR on an iPad Pro and a homemade tactile interface to basically give you a uh, sight. Uh, the idea was uh, to make a prototype to help blind people see, and he has done exactly that. 
Now, there is far too much to go into in a very short description of this video. So all I will say it is it is fantastically produced, fantastically put together, and the level of engineering and thinking and prototyping that goes into each one of this guy's videos is absolutely astounding. Um, this is one of the my new favorite YouTube channels in, in every way. And the mechanism that he used in order to make this thing work is just beautiful. I'm not going to say any more. I will leave a link to this, this in the description. And yeah, go and check it out. Stuff Made Here is one of my new favorite YouTube channels. And we have two robots for you today. This one I found on the, uh, the subreddit. You know the subreddit, the one that's the, the robots subreddit. The, the, the queen of the subreddit is Simone Geertz. It's it's not, I ca no, this isn't a, 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 a bad robot. Actually, this is a fantastic robot. This is a, a robot using suction cups to climb up a slide. And by the look of it, it does a lot more than that too. Um, it has a camera on the top for taking time lapses and uh, it's just a very, <laughs> Yep, yeah, that's, that's, the effect, that's the effect it has on me, seeing it slide down the slide. I'll have a link to this in the video description, but also there is a blog uh, covering everything that this particular robot can do. It is the ultimate indoor robot, and I'd be inclined to agree, actually. It's a very lovely little thing. I'll be spending a bit more time looking into it. Um, but this is not the only robot we have on the show this week. Ivan Miranda is a Spanish YouTuber and maker. Uh, you may well know him for his signature red plastic that he 3D prints everything out of. And he, in fact, has made uh, several huge 3D printers for printing large objects. And he's been putting those to good effect in uh, this recent video of him creating a new sand drawing robot. The video details how he built his sand drawing robot. It is made up of uh, many mini servos, many mini servos uh, and an Arduino Mega and a battery pack, um, which uh, puts the servos into the sand at times, pulls them up at different times, allowing you to leave patterns, drawings on the sand. This is yet another fantastic project from Ivan. If you haven't uh, seen his channel before, check it out. Um, some of the stuff he's done with persistence of vision and LEDs and lights is just astoundingly beautiful. Again, there will be a link in the description. Some projects do everything to you at once. Uh, they make you smile and they also make you think, why the hell did I not think of that? And they just epitomize exactly what's good about the internet, or in this case, the lack of internet. I'm sure you were just as excited as me the first time that the Chrome window came up to show you had no internet and your disappointment was replaced with joy when you realized they'd put a game in there, which was this jumping dinosaur game, which we're now very familiar with and there's been various videos of using AIs to beat it. However, Ryan Chan took it one step further and has used a stretch sensor and a force sensor in order to win the game or at least try and win the game by physically jumping and ducking. Uh, there is a, a fantastic write-up of it on the Arduino Project Hub and as always, uh, there is a video on his own channel, which I will be linking both of in the description. Uh, but yes, bravo, this is a fantastic project. Uh, you, you definitely win the making me smile with an Arduino of the week. Before ending today, I wanted to draw your attention to Point IoT. This is a program for people interested in IoT, whether you're an entrepreneur or a maker, and the idea is you're solving real life problems. Uh, you have to apply to this before the 28th of June and there is a 20,000 euro prize for the winning team. The program comprises of a couple of challenges. One is asset tracking for large scale infrastructure that is tracking things like foods and beverages and in this case vaccines, which is something that is probably going to become very important in the coming time. And the second challenge is prioritizing personal safety in the workplace by using Internet of Connected Things devices in order to track the location and the well-being of people who are working in dangerous situations. Now, um, this challenge is open to everybody. You can apply uh, to enter it on the points.iot website and there will, of course, be a link to that in the description of this video. So that has been the Electromaker show for this week. Um, I hope I managed to edit out all of the coughing and sneezing and that it wasn't too horrible for you to listen to my slightly ill voice. Uh, we'll be back for you next week. And uh, of course, if you want to take part in the mystery box competition, please say I would like to win what is in the mystery box in the comments below. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay creative. Take care.